dear game developers, more specifically, developers of mainstream third-person action games. Hi, and welcome to the Sid Course. Like discourse, but my name is Sid. The modern action game has come to dominate the console and PC platforms over the years, and for a good reason. Technological advancements, standardization and control schemes, user experience, and gameplay have made for a successful and, to a certain extent, formulaic approach to modern game design. Games like the linear and curated experiences from Naughty Dog to the open world adventures that showcase massive worlds. This isn't a letter to admonish or criticize this trend in game design. There are plenty of titles over the last 10 to 15 years that have iterated and improved upon this perspective in games. But also, this is a letter of praise for the works created in this genre. No doubt, a tremendous amount of time and effort from passionate developers and artists have culminated into bringing these experiences into reality. Instead, this letter is more of a request. It's a very niche request, if I'm being honest. The likelihood of it being used by many players at all is low. However, for personal reasons, which I'll get into, I'd like the option to be there. What I'm asking for is to move the character. Understandably, that may sound like an odd request. Let me explain. In 2002, I lost my eye. Thanks to the marvels of modern medicine and the excellent surgeons who helped me, my right eye is still attached to my body after being shot with a small projectile. My sclera was torn in half and my retina detached. For a few years I had to wear an eye patch, and as this was in that period of time before Pirates of the Caribbean made pirates cool, the bullying in school was a consistent part of my life. As it turns out, being shot in the eye means you're not likely to get vision in that eye anymore, and so now I'm blind on that side. My brain has stopped processing the signals from that optic nerve, and if I were to show you what it looks like to see through my eyes, it would look like this. It's just light and blur. After almost two decades of living like this, it's become the norm for me. Obviously, it comes with some caveats. Without depth perception, I can't tell how far away something is. When I'm in a new space, I will be constantly bumping into things. When it comes to the simple things, like shaving, I can't shave the right side of my face because, well, I can't see it. I love technology and the new waves of possibility that it brings. As far as entertainment goes, modern advancements mean that I'm one of those people that gets left behind. Films that are shot and presented in 3D aren't something that I can experience. My friends and spouse tell me I'm not missing anything and I trust them, but that does lead me into talking about VR. Without two eyes to process the dual images presented to both eyes within the headset, I can't experience that Z axis. That third dimension is the definitive point of virtual reality and what separates it from 2D screen experiences. And sadly, unless I get that Adam Jensen bionic eye update, it's something I can't experience. But I digress. This isn't a letter about VR. When it comes to my blindness, I'm not asking for representation either. Funnily enough, it appears that I already got that with what many players, including myself, would consider the coolest character in video game history. Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 3. You see, when I played Snake Eater in 2004, it was eye-opening for me. There was this hero, who also gets shot in his right eye, the same one as mine, and throughout the remainder of the game, his vision is impaired. It was the first time I felt seen in a video game, no pun intended. So I'm not asking for representation. As I said before, all I want to do is to move the character. Let me show you what I mean. The third person perspective works incredibly well for console gaming, especially for large television experiences. They can be grand and cinematic, making it just as enjoyable for a third party to watch along as it is to play. Specifically, it comes from that over-the-shoulder perspective that brings the player closer to the character and seeing the world from their perspective. When we look over the sweeping brush of Tsushima, we feel the journey that Jin must take on. When we look upon the great vistas, we feel that awe that is inspired within Nathan Drake. When we see a giant troll ready to crush us, we feel that same anticipation for the battle that Kratos does. When we walk down the corridors of the Ishimura, we feel that dread that Isaac feels. And as I show you more examples, more similarities you might be seeing. And if it's not that clear to you yet, let me show you what it looks like to me. As you can see, the majority of my vision cone is taken up by the player character. In a lot of cases, at least a third, sometimes half of the screen is blocked by their backs, and the rest of the screen, left to show you the enemy placement, the pathways of the level, etc., are invisible to me. Since this over-the-shoulder perspective came into action from the days of Gears of War and Resident Evil 4, I found that I am terrible at video games. 
My aim is off, my focus is bad, and I can't seem to notice polygonal changes. I found that turning my head slightly to the right helped me to see more, but now the key UI elements, which are predominantly positioned on the left hand side, are harder to see. And because I'm now sitting awkwardly, I'm giving myself spinal problems. And so, one day, I decided to try something on my PC. I mirrored my screen. And by mirrored, I mean playing it backwards. Sure, the UI is in the incorrect position and all the text is in reverse, but the world had opened up. Once I was blind, and now I can see. Almost instantly, my enjoyment of the games elevated as my performance improved. My view, though still limited, was open because the person I'm playing as was no longer in my way. By simply moving the character from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, I can now focus on playing the game and not trying to break my neck to see what I'm supposed to do. And don't get me wrong, I empathize with you, dear developers. I understand that the purpose of putting the character on this side of the screen is for both narrative and gameplay purposes. The majority of people that are playing these games are right-handed, and thus it's natural. As a user experience designer myself, I understand that we naturally direct ourselves from left to right, and it aids in the progression of the narrative and the gameplay. I'm not asking that we switch out the position of where the character is on screen as a permanent solution for everyone. I believe in the designed way to play created by the developers, but I also advocate for inclusivity and accessibility. What I'm really asking for here in this long-winded letter is an option somewhere in the menu that lets me switch where the character is on screen. I wouldn't consider this a high priority concern either. There are a lot more pressing matters for accessibility for visual impairment, the hard of hearing, cognitive issues, and motor function that should be addressed first for others to enjoy games. This particular option I'm talking about, this one's just for me. The modern third person action game has always been about bringing the player closer to the character and seeing the world from their perspective. And I hope that after this letter, you're able to understand what it's like from my perspective. Yours sincerely, Sid. Thank you for watching. If you like this episode, please leave a rating. If you're a developer interested in making this option a reality, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. If there's something about games that makes them difficult for you to play, let's talk about that in the comments below. A massive thank you to my patrons for their support and making this video a reality. If you'd like to join them in helping me make more videos, you can support me on Patreon. You'll get early access, director's commentaries, as well as exclusive content, like the soundtrack that you can hear in the background, which was produced by me. And of course, if you'd like to see more episodes of the Sid Course, please subscribe. Stay sexy.